Hey guys, how's it going? Tiz back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series. We're halfway through Group D now. We're using Uruguay today, as you can see on your screen in the thumbnail, etc. Now, if you're new to this series, basically what we do is we throw together a team from a side that has qualified for the World Cup in Rio 2014 this summer. We basically go through their World Cup history as a nation. It's not too much about the gameplay. It's more about the commentary and not too much about the team itself. Although some quick uh, players of note, obviously Fernando Muslera in goal. Very, very good goalkeeper this year, actually. I was really surprised with him. Uh, two in forms in there, Pereira at right back and Diego Godin at centre back, then you've got the upgraded Luis Suarez at cam sat behind 87 rated Edinson Cavani up top, but like I say this is more about the commentary, so uh, if you don't necessarily want to watch the uh, just some goals in the background then feel free to tab out carry on whatever you may have been doing previous to clicking on this video and uh, just listen to the commentary, but uh, let's get into Uruguay's World Cup history, and actually for the first time in a few episodes, we actually have a decent amount of history to get our teeth stuck into Uruguay actually won the first First ever FIFA World Cup in 1930 and hosted it as well. So uh, there isn't really a better way to uh, to start a brand new footballing competition. They didn't enter the next two tournaments in uh, 34 and uh, 1938, but when uh, the the tournament came back post war, they actually won that one as well. So with uh, their opening two competitions in the World Cup, they finished first. So a very very good way to uh, to welcome the uh, the the new world of uh, World Cup football into uh, into Uruguay. But uh, they were unable to make it three from three as uh, they were losing semi-finalists at uh, Switzerland 54 and finished fourth overall, losing the uh, the third place playoff. Another non-entry in 1958 due to a poor qualification campaign was uh, was followed by four back-to-back -back tournaments the uh, the first was uh, in Chile in 1962 but uh, it did actually end in bitter disappointment with a group stage exit unfortunately but they fared better here in England in 1966 and they made it out of the group uh, which actually uh, had England in it the hosts uh, they drew nil-nil with us in the, in that initial first game of the tournament but uh, they were eliminated in the uh, in the next round in the quarterfinals then because there weren't so many teams involved at that stage by uh, by the losing finalists West Germany of course lost 4-2 in the final to uh, to England our one and only triumph to date but uh, they're making steady improvements as a side and as a nation during the uh, during that period of you know the the mid to late 60s early 70s etc and uh, they made progression in the next tournament as well they went one step further and made it to the semi-finals where uh, they unfortunately lost again and again lost the uh, third place playoff final uh, and finished fourth overall at the uh, at the games in 1970 from there things weren't quite so bright overall for Uruguay for Uruguayan football a group stage exit in 1974 was followed by two further unsuccessful qualification campaigns and then two rounds of 16 defeats in Mexico 1986 and Italia 1990 to, uh, to Argentina and Italy respectively and uh, they seem to like doing things in twos because they followed up the two qualification or non qualifications with two round of 16s, and then they followed up that with another two tournaments unqualified for. They missed out on uh, 1994 at a USA and France 1998 before uh, they made it to the big stage yet again in 2002. But unfortunately, they uh, they kind of fell off the big stage quite early on with a group stage exit yet again, which actually marked their poorest performance at a World Cup tournament to date, finishing 26th overall. And then after yet again missing another tournament, we find ourselves at the most recent outing at South Africa 2010. This time with a new squad of players, the new fresh crop of gen you know the new generation of Uruguayan players, they definitely stepped up to the plate. They won their group, progressing through unbeaten with two wins and a draw. And in the round of 16, they uh, they got drawn against uh, against South Korea and they brushed past South Korea winning 2-1 it wasn't the uh, the most entertaining of games as far as I can remember but uh, they did kind of ease through into uh, into the quarterfinals in the quarterfinals they met up with uh, with Ghana a side that uh, you know one of the best to come out of Africa in recent times and uh, they drew 1-1 after uh, 90 minutes it stayed 1-1 after extra time and they eventually just about squeezed past the Ghanaians with a 4-2 penalty win. In the semi-final, they uh, they came up against the Dutch. Of course, as you'll be well aware, the Dutch went through to uh, to finish uh, runners-up in the uh, in the final at South Africa 22, and of course Spain running out 1-0 winners. But uh, again, Uruguay went through to the third-place playoff, and again they lost it. They finished fourth. At a, at a World Cup tournament for the third time in their history, so two wins, three fourth place, uh, you know, fourth place finishes after four, um, three rather, uh, semi-final appearances, uh, a few group stages, a few tournaments not qualified for, but they definitely have an extremely strong team. 
for this next tournament. Obviously, Luis Suarez is in the form of his life right now. Edinson Cavani not necessarily getting as much first-team football at, uh, at PSG as he might like, but still a striker of immense quality. Fernando Muslera is a great goalkeeper. Diego Godin is a great uh, great defender. Mike Caceres is, again, a great defender. They've got strength in all areas. The only the only area with the particular team that I was playing in, in, this, uh, in this particular, uh, with this squad, was centre mid. Gargano and Gonzalez, on a FIFA side of things, didn't really feel that strong, but whether they they, uh, they go with a different midfield for uh, for the actual tournament. I'm not too sure. I know, uh, like I say, with the with these squads, it's not necessarily a team of players that uh, will definitely go to the World Cup tournament. It's just a random team of uh, of eleven players that I decided to put together from uh, from the the ultimate team database. But a uh, great goal by Edinson Cavani there, by the way, really fantastic strike. But as for uh, as for a prediction for Uruguay in the in the tournament this summer, I honestly do not know. This group is so hard to predict. Obviously, we've already covered Costa Rica, and unfortunately, I do think they'll finish fourth and bottom. But the other three teams in uh, in this group, Uruguay. Italy and England. It's such a strong group. Any of those three, Italy, Uruguay, or England, could go through as winners, as second, and or could go out by finishing third in the tournament overall. It really is that close, and uh, I really genuinely wouldn't like to call it. So let me know in the comments section down below, how do you think Uruguay are going to fare in this group? It's almost a group of death. If, uh, if the fourth team uh, Costa Rica were a little bit stronger, then it would be an even even tougher test. But uh, they're actually ranked seventh in uh, in the FIFA rankings right now, Uruguay, as I record this uh, early March 2014. Uh, but they were actually ranked highest at uh, second overall in June 2002. The most caps held by Uruguayan national is Diego Forlan at 107. And as you might have expected, the top goal scorer is Luis Suarez with 39 goals. But that's going to bring this particular episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. That'd be absolutely superb. And uh, yesterday there was a My Player episode go up, a brand new series. So definitely check that out. Let me know what you thought of it. But that's all for today. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.